Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all to our Geotechnical Engineering 2 class. This is the sixth lecture and we are going to start the topic of settlements. My name is Dr. Jahanze Bisrar and I'm a lecturer at Civil Engineering Department UT Lahore. Before we go towards the topic of uh, understanding the settlements, we must uh, get familiarized with the types of foundations that are available. The, there are basically two major types of foundations. One is the shallow foundation which are generally laid closer to the natural surface level and they bear the depth to the width of the foundation ratio less than or equal to one according to the Zavis criteria and you may also consider some of the foundations with this D over B ratio ranging up to 3 to 4 as shallow foundations when you are dealing with foundations or structures having the basements. The deep foundations as the name suggests is something that you bypass the soil layers, uh, a low density or a problematic soil layer is crossed through and then the medium density if it is not required again it is crossed through and we avoid the compressibility of these two layers and we reach the high density soil or maybe the bedrock and we implement all the load of the superstructure directly to this high density soil. A high density soil is characterized for its um, less compressibility or offering least uh, chances of getting further settlements. So our focus in uh, geotechnical engineering too will be on shallow foundations mostly. Now these foundations when they fail they may give you indications in the form of apparent cracks in the corners or maybe the walls of the structures. The cracks may be horizontal, may be mixture of horizontal and inclined and they may be inclined as well as you can see in these pictures. These are generally due to the excessive settlements or maybe the shear failure of the foundations and I'm sure that you already studied the shear strength of the soils and the related shear failures uh, in your previous classes. So we will be focusing on settlement failures in this particular chapter or these sets of lectures that you are going to have with me in the foreseeable future. So the next topic of shear failure will be covered in bearing capacity if you haven't discussed this in the previous classes in greater depth. Now that's a very common classical example of differential settlement, a case of having a structure different magnitudes of settlements on its different corners. So this is the leaning tower of Pisa in Italy. And as you can see that this is settled more from its right hand side where I'm having the cursor at the moment and it is probably either not settled or settled very less on its left hand side and you can clearly see that it is out of plumb by um, a certain degrees. This is the total vertical downward deformation at the surface resulting from the applied load is called settlement and if we see these it is clear that this structure is not settling uniformly. So here is the definition of settlement. There are various types of settlements uh, from its permanence you can define it to be a permanent or maybe an irre irreversible settlement or a temporary settlement that is reversible in nature. So generally it occurs and uh, it takes the soil to its plastic limits of failure where there's no point of return whereas the elastic settlement is the one that when you remove the load your foundation or your natural surface level or the soil level may come to the same position as you can see in these two figures. Least to mention that the permanent failures would be caused by the sliding and rolling of the soil particles and they will be displaced to their new positions. Similarly reduction of void ratio is one of the reasons crushing of the soil particles and this may bring a, 
uh, subtle change in soils um, gradation itself and the consolidation settlement that definitely occurs with time so we have already covered the consolidation settlement in geotechnical engineering one which is the prerequisite of geotechnical engineering two that currently we are having temporary settlement on the other hand they may be due to the elastic compression of the soil so maybe a load that is present for some time when once it is removed the soil may acquire its original position so generally very small in soils and you may not really have this um, most of the time because soils elastic limits are very narrow similarly we can also characterize settlements uh, with respect to the uniformity settlements can be uniform settlements can be differential one such example you just saw with the leaning tower of pisa in italy that i showed you that uh, it was settling differentially so if the entire structure is moving downwards with the same magnitude from all its corner we characterize it to be a uniform settlement and if part of it is settling we may characterize it to be differential settlements so all the points settled by equal amount during the uniform settlement plus generally occurs under rigid foundations loaded with uniform pressure and resting over uniform soil types minimum minimal risk to structural stability uh, you can later on lift your structure up uh, and then you may might still be living in it even if it is settled by a um, significant amount and the risk to serviceability is the only problem serviceability as i generally explain is the um you're you're conscious that you are living inside a room at the moment when we i'm delivering this lecture to you and if the slab on your above your head uh, comes down by two two and a half feet suddenly you can clearly recognize it and in such a room with slab coming down by two two and a half feet uh, you might not like to have this lecture continued further so you will leave the room and you will go out of the room immediately that is called the serviceability limit has been exceeded and you don't feel safe in under that roof differential settlement is generally when the different parts are settling at different magnitude or some part are settling and the other parts are not settling at all um, it may happen with the roads as well uh, where we may have different uh, loading distributions and the soil behavior as you can see in the picture so types with respect to the mode of occurrence can be characterized as immediate settlement which are also elastic settlement recoverable in nature primary consolidation settlement that may occur with time and the secondary consolidation settlement which is also called creep that happens after a very long time um, when once the construction has been undertaken so there are various reasons that caused by elastic deformation of dry moist saturated soils no change in moisture content occurs during the elastic settlement it occurs immediately after construction computed using elasticity theories and important for granular soils alone primary consolidations on the other hand are important for non-granular or cohesive soils mostly plastic soils so it happens because the water expelled out of the voids and the poor water pressure dissipates with time and the effective stresses increase we have already covered this in consolidation theory in geotechnical engineering one so i'll keep referring you to geotechnical engineering one because it's a prerequisite of this course and you're supposed to have an eye on that as well secondary consolidation settlement is a volume change due to rearrangement of particles and it occurs at constant effective stress important for organic soils and it is similar to creep in concrete so you'll be uh, learning this in your next semesters with prc1 and prc2 as well now what could be the causes of settlement the best the biggest cause in set of settlement is the changes in the stress history of the soil so if there is no construction or there's no building on a ground on, on your football sta stadium and suddenly someone comes up with a lot of machinery and they construct some structure on that uh, you might expect it to settle if it was not uh, that strong or having not um, or not having that much the bearing capacity so 
once you construct a structure stress history changes stress changes on the um, on the soil and that may cause the settlement so excavations movement of groundwater table uh, machine vibrations and earthquakes can be the reasons desiccation is a process whereby um, you get uh, a lot of drying and plant life cycles changes due to structure of soil that is secondary compression mining subsidence swelling and shrinkage and landslides can be the reasons why we have the settlements now the magnitude of settlements um, may be a summation of intermediate immediate settlements primary consolidation and secondary consolidation and we need to quantify all of them this is consolidation settlements including primary and secondary and we have already covered this in your technical engineering one so we'll be mostly focusing on immediate settlements but we'll have a small, uh, very brief preview of consolidation the settlement criteria most often used criteria for design of allowable settlement exceeds before the shear strength exceeds so settlements is imminent than the uh, than the shear failure so maximum settlement thresholds uh, leading to differential settlements can be one inch to two inch in different masonry structures frame structures it may be relatively higher margin may be given with two to four inches and silos and mats uh, three inches to 12 inches can be your permissible limits serviceability thresholds in common engineering practices are and these will be the ones that we will be using mostly is for square and strip foundations when we'll be covering bearing capacity it is 25.4 millimeter for isolated footings and for combined footings or wraps or mats uh, sorry not the combined footing wraps and mats it is generally 2 inches or 50.8 millimeters now as you can see in this picture that the settlements is comprised of that happens in a very small amount of time is your immediate settlement and it happens very uh, significantly in the granular soils however for cohesive soils or plastics for fines uh, it may not be the case that you get a lot of immediate settlement so for it will be surprising to know that uh, for most granular soils the immediate settlements happen within the first seven days of your construction uh, and, and that generally is around 90 to 95 percent of the expected set, total settlement but as you can see over here this may be the case of a um, non-cohesive fines whereby you may have small magnitude of the immediate settlement in a very little time then there's plenty of time for the primary consolidation to occur that is given by SC and then we have got creep secondary compression and that still takes a lot of time to happen and it may continue beyond the design life of the structure so SC uh, and SCS are mostly common in cohesive soils and they are more dominant whereas SI in granular soils so we generally get this uh, SI immediate settlement by elastic elasticity theory that we'll be covering later on uh, in this class and uh, consolidation theory is used generally for cohesive soils to to capture SC and the secondary compression then we have got some empirical relations for the secondary compression alone and we'll try to see them as well uh, I'll, I must remind you that we have already covered this in Geotechnical Engineering 1, the Consolidation Settlement, but we will be covering part of, uh, very briefly in this particular class as well. Um, so, what is a Consolidation Settlement is that uh, if we consider the phase diagram, uh, it comprises of uh, waters, water in the voids and the soil, soil solids. So, soil solids are not compressible, but when we start to compress the water takes the entire stress and pore water pressure generates so soil volume reduction due to expulsion of water upon application of external load is called the consolidation settlement and because uh, these uh, maybe the water may be captured inside very small fines so when you're compressing it it may take very long time for the water particles to come out and that is why for different soils we have different consolidation behavior but after consolidation your soil volume will not, will not change but your volume of the void wherein the water is may change significantly as you can see over here. We will continue this in our next video inshallah. Stay tuned.